Logic Pro is one of the best DAWs for songwriters. It's very well-rounded, giving you the tools to record, edit, mix, produce. It's packed with sound libraries. It's got pretty much everything you need right out of the box. But if you're starting from scratch, it could be a bit much. Even if you're coming from something like GarageBand, which is very similar to Logic Pro, Logic is going to have all these extra features like an entire mix window and bus routing and just all this extra stuff that's going to make it really confusing but also really cool. So congrats, you've got a really powerful system at your fingertips, and I wanna get you moving past some of these technical things that might be slowing you down and into using this software creatively. Today we're gonna to talk about vocal recording, and before we begin, I wanna encourage everyone to jump down into the comments and let me know what you wanna see covered in future videos. If there's anything tripping you up about recording or music production in general, if I know the answer to it, I promise I'll make a video about it. So back to vocals. We're gonna cover everything from plugging in your microphone to setting up your interface properly so that it gets sound from your mic and plays back into your headphones. We're also gonna talk about levels and how to set them correctly so that you get a nice clean signal that doesn't distort but isn't too soft. When we open up Logic Pro, the first thing we're gonna see is this new track window. So for recording vocals, we're gonna start with an audio track. Don't worry about the details just yet because I'm gonna walk you through all of that when we go through the track settings and setting up our interface. So we'll close this for now and hit create. And I always recommend that you name your tracks right away. Um, it doesn't seem to matter when you've got just one, but if you had a whole session's worth of tracks, you're gonna wanna know what that is. So we're gonna call this V for vocal, lead one. Okay, so before we jump into the track settings, I just want to help you set up your interface the right way so that Logic knows where to get sound from and where to send it for playback. So let's jump up to where it says Logic Pro X in the top menu here. We're going to go to Preferences, Audio. Okay, and the main thing we want to look at is the output and input devices. We're basically telling Logic this is where my microphone is plugged into and these are the speakers to use. In my case, I'm using the Apogee Ensemble, so I'm going to set both my input and output devices to Ensemble and hit Apply. So up at the top where it says Mic here, this is where we can choose our input type. Since we'll be recording vocals through this microphone here, we're gonna choose Mic. Next we have a couple of options in a row. We have something that says 48, which stands for 48 volts phantom power. This is gonna supply power to certain microphones that require it. Now the Shure SM7B here does not because it's a dynamic microphone, but if you were using a condenser microphone, you'd wanna make sure 48 volts is checked so that you're supplying power to the mic, otherwise you won't get any sound. The filter here is a high pass filter. It's just gonna cut out some of the rumble below a certain point. So for vocal recording, it's fine if you wanna leave that engaged, but if you were recording something like a bass drum or a bass guitar, you might not wanna filter out the low end, it just record as much as possible and you can filter that out later to exactly where you want that to cut off. Next thing we see here is a phase inverter. It looks like a little circle with a line through it. And that's just gonna flip the phase on the microphone. So when we're recording to a single mic, it's not too important. So we're just gonna leave the phase normal here. But if we were using two microphones, we found that one of them was recording out of phase. This is where we could flip that so that both microphones are recording in phase with each other. Next up is the input gain. So we could think about this as sort of the microphone sensitivity settings. This is how, how loud or soft we're gonna be recording. And it's different than the volume that we're gonna be listening at. We can adjust those settings at the fader below, and we'll go into that in more detail. But it's important that you're setting these levels based on the metering and not necessarily the volume. Okay, so sometimes if we can't hear ourselves enough in our headphones, we wanna crank the input gain, but what actually happens is we're distorting the sound because we're clipping it on the way in. It does make it louder in our ears, but that's the wrong stage to do that. We wanna be recording nice, clean signal, and then we can use the fader to make the track louder or softer. So I know I'm moving kind of quickly through this first batch of settings here, and that's because these are gonna be specific to my interface and how much digital control it allows. Now, if you don't have an interface that allows as much digital control, you might have to just make these settings directly on the interface itself. Moving along to the EQ section here, if we click on this window, it's gonna pull up the stock EQ for us, which is actually a pretty cool one. Um, and you can see that if we make any adjustments in this big EQ window, that it will show us an overview in the little track inspector here. Just a quick, like, at a glance, what's going on EQ-wise for that track. Okay, moving on from EQ, we have our input selection. So I know my microphone's plugged into input eight. I'm gonna go over to input, select eight, and we can see that we're starting to get some level on the meter. Um, I'm not hearing it through the speakers, or if I was wearing headphones, I wouldn't be hearing that yet. And I'll show you why in just a minute, but let's keep going down the line here. So since we loaded the first stock EQ here, it loads it as the first plugin in our plugins list. If we were to go just below here, we can click to add more plugins and effects to our channel. Below that we have sends, and now this is where you can send a copy of the track to another bus. So for example, if I had a reverb, 
on bus number 6, I could send this track to bus 6, then I can use this gain knob next to it to adjust how much of this do I want being sent to the reverb. It's a really good way to save some processing on your computer. It's also a good way to create a cohesive sound, because if I had one vocal that was in a large hall, a large cathedral, and another one that was in a really short, tiny room, they'll sound very disjointed. So by sending all of the vocals to one reverb in the session, then they're all gonna sound like they're in the same space with the same kind of effects processing. Just below that, we have this little gray bar, and that's where we can click to make additional sends. If we wanted to send another one to another reverb, and another one could go to a delay. Below that, we have our output settings. So if I wanted to route this track to um, maybe a group, right? So all of my vocals hit a, uh, a main vocal fader. I could send the output of the entire track to a bus, to a vocal bus. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna leave those to our stereo output, which is gonna go to our speakers or to our headphones. Next, we have groups. So if you wanted to control all of your vocals with one fader, we could send all of our vocals to one group or all of our drums to one group, guitars, etc. Below that, we have automation settings, and we're not gonna go over that in too much detail right now. For the most part, you wanna leave that in read because that just means it's gonna read any automation you've already written. Next, we have our panning knob left to right. That's pretty self-explanatory. And below that, we have our volume. Now, this is gonna be our track volume. This is going to be what's either being played back through the speakers or into our headphones while we're recording. So when I was talking a little bit earlier about microphone sensitivity versus track volume, this is where we wanna make those adjustments to what we're hearing so that our headphone mix is comfortable. The mic sensitivity is where we wanna make adjustments so that we're getting a nice clean signal, a nice clean level without distorting. And in some cases that might be too low. So we can go ahead here and make our track fader louder so that we can hear it at the volume we want in our headphones and that doesn't affect the volume that's being recorded. So those are two independent gain settings. One's what we record, the other's what we hear. Okay, so like I said, I'm still not hearing myself through the speakers and we'll get to that in just a minute, but first I wanna go over setting proper levels. So if we look at the meter here, we wanna be using these little numbers on the side. Um, one quick thing I wanna show you that's very important, I'm gonna to continue to speak and just check the microphone, but I'm gonna pull this fader down here. Now we already established that this volume does not affect what's being recorded, okay? But currently, if I pull down on this fader and I'm gonna keep on speaking here, watch what happens to the level, the signal is getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, okay? This is called post-fader metering. And it's kind of lying to us when we're recording. It can be useful when we're mixing or editing, um, but while we're recording, we want this set to zero. If this is set to zero, then we know that our input settings aren't being affected by this fader. So what I like to do is go up to mix and select pre-fader metering. And what that's gonna do is pop that meter on the other side of the fader. So if you can think about your channel strip settings as going from left to right, the meter where it is physically on that fader is gonna tell you if you're metering in pre or post fader, okay? So again, if it's on the left, it's before the fader, and that's telling you that the metering is happening pre-fader. It's actually a really cool way to always know if you can trust the metering. So if it's on the left, it's pre. It means it comes before. It's just like we read left to right. If the meter's on the left, it's before the fader. Again, if I switch this back to post-fader metering, it's going to be on the right. It's going to be coming after the fader. So let's switch that back. We'll leave this in pre-fader metering. And now if I keep talking and just testing the microphone here and I'm moving the fader down, we're noticing that nothing is happening to my meter. My fader is all the way down and my meter's not lying to me. It's still hovering right around where it was just a minute ago. If I flip this back to zero, it doesn't shoot back up because we didn't change that with the fader. All right, so let's talk about setting levels. Now, I'm just using my speaking voice here, and I'm coming in around minus 17. If I get a little extra loud, minus 16. Decibels go backwards, so zero is the loudest we wanna be. Over zero is clipping and distorted. If I was doing a podcast, which would be a similar setup to what I'm doing now, I would shoot for this sort of minus 16, minus 19 decibel range. If I have a singer, I try and find the loudest thing they're gonna do, which is usually in the chorus, and I'll have them do a take for me. Um, I wanna make sure their headphones are nice and comfortable, and that it's gonna be a really accurate take. If you just have a singer go into the booth and you say, okay, test the microphone for me, they're not gonna give you their loudest performance. They're gonna be a little bit shy, there's no music playing. You wanna give them a good headphone mix, make sure it's as loud as they need so that they can really belt and give you what is gonna be their loudest note. That's the note you want to come in around minus six decibels, and that way, if they go even louder, you're not gonna clip, and that perfect take is gonna be nice and clean. Okay, so I see myself coming in on this meter, but why can't I hear anything? That is where some of these controls down at the bottom come into play. We have our record enable 
and our input monitoring. Now, if I hit record enable, this is basically saying we want to record on this pass to this track. If I had a whole session's worth of tracks, some of these tracks are gonna be playback tracks, the instrumental, right? That's the one I'm gonna be listening to while I'm recording. So I need to tell Logic record to this track, don't record over those tracks. So with record enable turned on, I'm ready to record, but I'm still not hearing myself. So that is where input monitoring comes into play. Input monitoring just says whatever is coming in through the input of this track, play it back through the speakers or my headphones. So if I click this little eye and I keep on talking, I'm starting to hear myself. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to record. We've got levels set, we can hear ourselves through the headphones, and I'm just gonna go up to the transport and we're gonna hit the record button. And I'll just keep talking here a little bit so we can see we've got some signal coming in. It's got a lot of headroom. Even if I get a little bit closer here, it's not clipping, it's not distorting. Um, it's a nice clean signal and we've done it. We have recorded vocals into Logic Pro. I'm gonna turn record enable and input monitoring off. We'll move our playhead back to the beginning and we'll hit play just to test it out. And I'll just keep talking here a little bit so we can see we've got some signal coming in. It's got a lot of headroom. Even if I get a little bit closer here, it's not clipping, it's not distorting. Um, it's a nice clean signal and we've done it. So today we covered a lot of the technical aspect of getting sound out of your voice through the microphone, in through your interface, and record it onto your computer. I know a lot of you have invested in some equipment recently and have been a little bit stumped as to how to get started. So I hope we helped to clear some of that up for you today, and if so, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.